Hi, uh, my name is Gökhan Hotamışlıgil. I'm a professor of genetics and metabolism at uh, Harvard University's uh, School of Public Health in the Department of Genetics and Complex Diseases. My name is Margaret Greger, and I'm the lead author on a recent paper published in Cell Reports entitled The Role of Adipocyte XBP1 in Metabolic Regulation During Lactation. This work is part of my graduate studies done in conjunction with Dr. Hoda Mishlio. So in our lab, one of the questions that we focus on involves the behavior of a fascinating cell type called adipocyte, or the fat cell. Of course, the cells do not sit alone in the body, they form a tissue, and this tissue also exhibits incredible plasticity based on the conditions of the organism. And so why is this important uh, property of the cell? Because over the years, it became clear that the, the function, functional integrity of this tissue and the cell type is critical for many functions that are central to the survival of uh, human species. Chief among them uh, would be starvation, for example. In, in the uh, past decades, we were curious about the mechanisms that support this plasticity. How can a cell type go in between these extreme circumstances and maintain its integrity? And to approach this question, we turned into the function of an organelle uh, in all cells called endoplasmic reticulum. Since the synthetic capacity of this organelle can also fluctuate, we had this idea that during the transformation of adipocytes, either it's during its differentiation or accumulation of energy or disposal of its energy, it will have to adapt to the synthetic pathways that are operational in the cell. A less appreciated or less studied area of metabolic flux happens during the process of lactation. And an interesting transition in metabolism occurs during lactation where it becomes, instead of homeostatic, it becomes what they call homeoretic or metabolism with a flow, metabolism with a flux, a direction. Although lactation is indispensable to the survival of all mammals, very little is known about the metabolic transition that occurs during lactation, especially in the context of adipose tissue. And since we thought ER function would be a good place to investigate and uncover mechanisms controlling this, we developed a system utilizing the ER transcription factor XBP1. What we did is to delete XBP1 in the adipose tissue or adipocyte specifically in mice. As I mentioned previously, during lactation, adipose tissue is um, supposed to deplete itself of lipid, but what was happening in the mothers with um, XPP1 deleted in their adipocytes was that we noticed they had um, increased adipose tissue compared to their wild-type counterparts during lactation, but only during lactation. And interestingly, along with this increase in adipose tissue in the mothers, we noticed that the pups were not gaining weight during lactation as um, compared to wild-type pups. We investigated the milk of the XBP1 deleted mothers and did not see any differences in components of the milk. However, when we checked milk production, that is the quantity of the milk, we did see that less milk was being produced by the XBP1 deleted mothers compared to wild type mothers. When we investigated the mechanism behind the phenotype of the XBP1 deleted mice, we found that prolactin, which is the major lactogenic hormone, actually cause an increase in XBP1 expression in adipocytes. We also observed an increase in XBP1 expression in adipose tissue during lactation, which is a state where there would be high prolactin levels. Interestingly, when you overexpress XBP1 in adipocytes, we saw a downregulation of lipogenic gene expression. Or the opposite occurred when we knocked down XBP1 in adipocytes and treated with prolactin, we actually saw an increase in lipogenic gene expression and we observed the same uh, phenomena in the tissues during lactation. So in the course of lactation, 
the inability to suppress uh, synthetic pathways, especially related to lipid generation, results in mothers maintaining their fat content, whereas babies not receiving the sufficient nutrition to support their growth. So what is the relevance of these observations into human condition? So we can ask whether the fluctuations in adipose tissue is critical for human lactation and growth of uh, babies. There is emerging evidence that obesity actually introduces a challenge at a certain threshold to support lactational performance. It has been documented in numerous studies that obese mothers have difficulty with lactation either its, its performance or duration and supporting the, the growth of the babies. So if we, of course, roll back from this to the societies where obesity is not prevalent, then one can speculate that those who have the best capacity to fluctuate their adipose tissue energy storage and disposition will have the best advantage for supporting their babies and therefore succession of uh, the generation.